Hello students, we're going to talk today about using the online databases through the library's website to do your research. Uh, one of the benefits of this is that you can do all the research for your research paper uh, from any computer anywhere. You don't actually have to go into the library to do it. Um, so we're going to begin by going to the BIPSI website, which is just bipsy.edu. And once you arrive there, you're going to go to Academic Life and you're going to click Library Learning Commons. This takes you to the library's homepage. From the library homepage, you're going to click Subject Guides down here under Student Links. And this gives you a list of all the different subjects and, su and study areas that we have at BIPSI. For this class, obviously, you want to click the one that says English. Um, once you arrive at the English page, then on the left, you're going to see a link that says Current Events 101 over on the left. And that's the one that we're going to use for your research paper. So we're going to click this. Now what you have here are a list of databases. And every database is essentially a group of articles um, and every database has a different group. So if we're not finding good material in one database, we can switch to another one. I'm going to show you how to use two databases that I think are the most useful, but you can use any of these that you like and just kind of click around and explore. The first one I'm going to show you, unfortunately, the library has kind of buried, but it's really great. So I want to show you how to get there. You're going to click this button that says view more results. And this gives you an alphabetical list of all the databases. Right here, the very second one is Academic Search Complete. This, I think, is the best database to use for your research paper. And you can do all of your research using just this one database if you want to. So since I'm off campus, it's going to ask me to log in. And it's going to ask you to log in, too. And you do this with simply your first and last name and then your six-digit birthday. Now we're logged in and we can use this just like we would on campus. So uh, to do our research, the simplest way to begin is just to type your general topic into the first blank. So let's say for now that I want to write my paper about um, the death penalty. So I'm just going to type in death penalty because I want you to see what happens if I type that in all by itself. I'm going to get a huge number of results. Look how many results I got. I got 9,294 results. That's too many for you to even skim the headlines. So the best way to start narrowing down is to use your second search bar. Um, in this search bar, you can add another search term to kind of narrow down um, maybe a more particular specific angle you want to take on the topic. So I want to know about the death penalty just in Louisiana. So I'm going to use that as my second search term. And we'll try again and see if we can narrow this down at all. Now we have 92 articles. That's still kind of a lot. Um, it's better than 9,000. So one other way that we can kind of narrow things down, if you look over here on the left, we have a chronology bar. So this is telling me that the oldest article here is a night from 1976 and the newest one is from 2017. This is a current events paper, so we only want really current material. So I'm going to drag this bar so that I'm only getting articles um, that are 10 years old. So now my articles are only going to be 2007 to 2017. It's going to auto search for me. Now I have 54. Uh, that is enough, a small enough number that you can just skim the headlines and see if anything sounds good to you. So I'm going to look through here, and um, this one sounds interesting to me. So this one is about the race of the victim in, the, in homicides and executions. So uh, this article is going to be examining uh, if there was a white victim, does the person, is the person more likely to be executed for that crime versus a, a, a black victim? Um, so you're going to be tempted when you see this headline to click the actual headline link but I don't want you to do that because if you do, I'll just show you. It takes you to what's called an abstract. This is just a summary of the article, but it's not going to help you because you can't read the actual article. So don't click the headline, even though that seems like um, the logical thing to do. You're going to click this button that says PDF full text. And when you click that, it's actually going to let you read 
the whole original article with, and this is very important, the original page numbers. It's going to take a second to load here. Okay, now we're loaded up, I think. Here we go. So you can see the article is here and we have the original page numbers up in the corner. That's important for when you actually use quotations from this article. So once you've read the article and you decide that it's really good and you want to use it, you want to do a couple things. First, you either want to print it out, which you can do using this button, or you want to email it to yourself, which you can do using this button. If you click it, it just pops up a little thing. You type in your email address here, click send, and that gives you a record of it. The reason I'm telling you to print or email it is because one of the biggest problems students have is trying to get back to an article uh, at a later date. It's often really hard to find them again, so make sure you're keeping a record. The other thing that you want to do is to generate a citation. Once upon a time you had to do all of that by hand, but now the databases do it for you. So what you're going to do is click this little button that looks like a piece of paper. It says Cite. And after you click that, you'll see a lot of different formatted data um, citations, sorry. And so you're going to scroll down until you see the one that says MLA. Don't use any of the other ones because they won't be correct. So I just copy and paste this MLA citation, and then I'm going to open up a blank Microsoft Word file, and I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, if it looks funny when you paste it in, uh, when you paste, make sure you click Keep Destination Formatting, and that makes it look a little bit more normal. In the next video, I'll show you how to format this correctly. Okay, so that's how you use Academic Search Complete. Once more, you want to start by just typing in your general search term on top. If you get too many results, then start typing in some um, other search terms to narrow it down. And finally, you can narrow down by date. And you can get as current as a year or two years. Um, Academic Search Complete is not your only option, though. So we're going to go back to the Current Events homepage. And the other database I really like is called CQ Researcher. This database has a lot of really useful tools for students. So once again, we're going to type in death penalty, although you can see over here um, it's already one of their hot topics. So let's just see if we click it, what happens. It's going to give me just kind of an overview. We want to search the whole thing. Um, you can see the dates on these, and um, some of them say short report, but I want a big one. I want the long report, if you will. So I clicked the first result, and this is a really great summary of the topic itself, so you can kind of learn a little bit about it. Um, but the really valuable stuff that students like is over here on the left. So you can click this link and get an overview of the topic. You can click this link and you can get current situation, which tells you like what's the most current issue related to your topic, what's going on right now with your topic. Students also really like this link, which is pro-con. And what this does is it chooses two people who are both experts in this field about the death penalty. One of them is for the death penalty, the one that says pro. One is against the death penalty, and so they're both kind of making an argument, just like you'll be doing, uh, with their reasons for and against the death penalty. So you're welcome to read these pro and con essays and quote from them as well. You also have a chronology, which is kind of like a timeline of important events that have happened in the history of your topic. Um, and again, you can kind of feel free to click through all of these and find stuff that you think might be useful to you. So this is kind of what CQ Researcher articles look like in general. They're broken into these different categories. So once again, if you decide that you really like one of the articles, you want to make sure you're saving it somehow. So you can print it using this button. You can email it using this button. You can even save it as a file to your computer using this button. So use one of those three things to keep a record. And you also, again, want to generate a citation. So to do that, we're going to click the Cite Now button. Notice again that it has various different ways that you can format your citation, and just like last time, you're going to choose MLA. Um, and so right up here on top, it gives me the citation, and once again, I'm going to copy it and paste it. 
into my blank Microsoft Word file. And remember, match destination formatting is going to make it look more normal. Um, okay, if you have any questions about doing research, let me know. There's a follow-up video to this one, picking up right where we left off, that's going to show you how to format this page, which will turn into your works cited page.